Uh, hello, my friend. Hopefully, you are doing great. So, uh, in the last uh, video session, you already knew about how to create a simple page object. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a global weight for screen display be before you interact with the element on the screen. So, let's talk about the problem first. Why do we need to do that? So, for example, let me open the application first. So, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, during the, the, the session, if you hear any noise, please ignore it because um, I am at home and the kids playing around. So I keep saying that because maybe uh, someone just uh, zoom um, directly in some random lesson and they hear some noise. Uh, it's not from the beginning, so I should tell about that. <laughs> okay. Um, so for example, on your application and you are going to test for the login form here. And in the last video session, we wait, we wait to the element is display before we return it. But for the application on the phone, uh, especially for the native application, when you see something display on the screen, the rest thing will be displayed as well. It's a, a little different compared to the web application, for the web application. So one of um, the element on the, the base display, but we are not sure that the rest of them display. But for the application on the phone, uh, I mean the native application, when you see something display here, the rest of them almost, most of case will be displayed. So that means we need to wait a global wait on the screen. That means we just need to call that function before interact with the rest of element on the, the screen. So if you construct your uh, page object like that, so should, it should be not good because it is stable, but it is not fast. Um, the reason that every single time you call something like this, the dollar and then you put the selector value, that means you tell us, hey, find for me a, a web element um, sorry, uh, an element on the screen with this letter, and then we wait. And then that element is now displayed, right? For example, after it displayed on the light number, the nice here, and then we return what? This syntax again tell that, hey, try for me that element again. That means you need to send the query uh, command to the server again, and that means that makes your uh, uh, testing is not slow. So we don't need to do that at all. So let's try to uh, refactor this page object with uh, a new global weight. So we will keep uh, locking like this, and we will have something like another page object here. You you probably review all of them, just try to make another function. So just try to create a new page object with the name login, something global, global login with global weight, okay? And then we add here. So we create a class like a normal page object login with global weight here. Everything is the same. So let me copy the selector value here on the top. And then let me copy all of the class body here. And we put into this class body here. And then we export the full new login page here. Okay, everything is good now. So we remove, we remove, and we remove the method to wait. So how can we do this? We are going to create another function with the name wait to screen displayed. And in this case, I'm going to pass something like, uh, for example, I think that if 
the the email text field here is displayed and i can assume that the rest of the element on the screen is displayed right because it's a very simple application and as i told with you in the beginning of this video lesson that for most of native application on the mobile phone so when you see something display here the rest will be displayed so in some specific case you may um, try to wait until that element uh, display before return it but most of case you don't need to do that so create a global function like this and then we call something like five this element and then wait for display with the option timeout 5000 five seconds right and then you can use it so go back to the test script account here and we are going to create another one uh, test script with the same mostly the same with the old one so let's create something like tk 001 login pay object global wait and then we copy all here and we paste here right but uh, the thing here that import login paste from here we deal with login with global wait and here uh we just need to do something that on the line number 11 we do that we do login paste and we call wait to the screen display now we just wait for the email test field display and we assume that the rest of all the elements will be displayed and we can view like before so that will make your testing faster than before because now you just wait a little and then you can continue for the rest you see it's very good uh, strategies for you to learn and apply in the real project so the next step that if you want to run this test script i think you already knew how to do it right so the first step you need to start the appium server by command line or you can open the appium desktop application and run the server from that application after that you go back to the text configuration file here and replace the the old test script contained here with the new one here right and then you trigger the the the, the, the command and run the test i i, I don't think i need to, to show you how to do that so try to practice and keep learning see you in the next lesson